Thanks, uh, thanks, Robin. Um, our final uh, panelist is uh, Kendra Strauss, uh, uh, Professor of Simon Fraser University um, Labor Studies, and then we'll open it up for discussion, questions, comments. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. So, normally the academic is the one who talks the longest. I'm going to try to be the one who speaks for the shortest amount of time. But I am going to try and respond directly to some of the um, points about labor education. I have the challenge of um, teaching labor issues in a slightly different context, mostly to undergraduates, some of whom are labor studies minors, but many of whom are doing really diverse kinds of degrees at Simon Fraser. They might be business students or psychology students or in health sciences. And they all come together in Labor Studies 101. And my job is to show them what it means to look at both history but also present issues from the perspective of working people. And when I first started teaching that class, I thought it was going to be really difficult. But actually, it's not. Because when you tell them that everybody in that class is going to have to work for a living, and for the most part it's true, possibly not all the time, you start to connect them. And of course, many of them are working to put themselves through the university in the face of enormous and burgeoning debt. Many of them are, are the first in their families to go to university, and many of them are from different countries. Um, and when you start talking to them about what it means to try and understand the economy and society and politics and conflict from the perspective of working people, you actually start to get to a common place, a common place for trying to understand these things. And so I just, I just want to speak to a couple of the really wonderful points I think that Gene made about the projects that, that he has been engaged with. What really struck me was, was, for one thing, his evocation of tools and images and, and these diverse kind of sources of material culture, things you can touch and look at. And those things are so important, not only for people within unions to understand the history of their own unions, but for a 21-year-old sitting in my classroom, those are the things that really connect them to the history of the labor movement, but also to thinking about what their own future is as a worker. So that idea of kind of make those things having value and circulating in society as an important tool for politics and solidarity, I think is not only really relevant to students, to undergraduate students or graduate students, but, but as well as to, to union members and those of us who are kind of out in the working world. The other thing that really struck me was when Jean talked about um, exploring the labor movement and the, the, the history of, of his union as a history of rank and file, radical kind of democratic control, radical politics, militant opposition to prejudice. And I think one thing that young people don't always understand is the role of the labor movement and unions as agents of radical political change. They know about the civil rights movement. Some of them know about the women's movement, although not always in very positive terms. They know about other social movements, but they don't always know about the labor movement. And I think one of the most important aspects of, um, of sort of labor education and labor history is giving the, the labor movement its place in the tradition of radical movements and making young people who otherwise get a lot of negative, negative images about the labor movement in the mainstream press this sense of how it has been an agent for progressive change that's touched all of their lives. So I, that, that really struck me. And that, that idea of evocation, of using labor history to evoke responses. Um, the other thing that really struck me was the idea of education, labor education, meeting current economic and political needs, including for organizational change. And when my students go out into the world, it's just as important for them to understand that as it is for people struggling to deal with a changing labor movement or a changing union structures. And arming them with a sense of, of labor history and of labor studies gives them a sense of how 
that can be part of their way of going out into the world and striving for the change that many of them do actually want to see, a, a sense that there is injustice in the world. Um, and just to follow on from that, I think one of the things that I find in the classroom with labor education is that for students in an academic environment, in a university environment, who who hear a lot about very abstract processes, they hear a lot about globalization, they hear about capitalism, and to bring those things back down to earth from the very abstract kind of <coughs> sphere, sort of labor education and labor history is one of the strongest tools we have for that, for, for students to really understand what those processes mean on the ground and how they play out. So I'm just going to say very briefly that I thought all of those things were really reflected in what, what Dave said. Um, and you know the idea of oral traditions as kind of concrete like political practice, right? The way people tell stories about things that have happened. That's part of the way that politics gets done. And it, that's just as important in the classroom, right, as it is you know, on, on the shop floor or anywhere else. Um, but I think, that the, and this is the final point I'll make, is that students sometimes don't understand that the history of the things that many of, the thing, m many of us take for granted, healthcare, education, um, an eight-hour working day, overtime, health and safety, a weekend, that those things were fought for and won in the teeth of, of massive opposition and struggle. And it sort of puts in perspective then, when they're reading online, because none of them read newspapers, when what they're reading online about and trying to understand, for example, the teacher strike. Are those teachers, you know, why are those greedy teachers wanting more money? That kind of history of how hard fought all those victories and rights are is really essential for them understanding what's happening in their world today. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you.